Hi, it's Corrine, and today I'm making a shabby chic handmade journal using my cinch machine. I'm using some gorgeous products from both Wild Orchid Crafts and a beautiful paper collection from Knitwit Collections. I'm starting out with two pieces of chipboard that are seven and a half by four and a half. I've already added my tape to them. Here are the papers that I'm using. They are five and a half by eight and a half. This is for the front and back cover. Here is the paper that I'm going to be using in the journal, and that is seven and a half by four and a quarter. And here are the inside pieces for the inside covers, two of them, seven and a quarter by four and a quarter, and some layering pieces for the front. One is four by seven, the next is three and a half by six and a half, and a little journaling card that is two and three quarters by four. So the first thing I'm going to do is add my papers to the cover, and I'm actually adding them just like you would a mini album. Again, I've already added my tape, so I'm just going to remove the tape backing. I like to add a little bit of glue to the center, and now I'm just going to wrap my papers around the chipboard. I marked which side I want to be the binding. That's the little arrow that I did with the pencil mark. So here's my back cover. I'm going to add that as well. And now I'm going to start folding up the sides. Actually, first I'm going to miter the corners. This way when we fold them, there's not a lot of bulk there. So I'm cutting almost up to the chipboard. I'm leaving about an eighth inch. That way you don't see any exposed chipboard once we fold it. So now here's where I'm kind of folding up on all the corners, just making my paper bend the way I want it to bend, breaking up those fibers. And I'm going to remove all my, my tape backing. I like to fold down the long sides first and then for the shorter sides I'm going to tuck in the corners. So I'm just tucking in those little side pieces. I'll show you up close what it looks like once they're tucked in. By tucking them in it avoids a sharp corner once it's folded. So I know it's a little bit hard to see on camera but you just kind of tuck in that corner and you want to be careful not to tear the paper. Just lightly use your bone folder and tuck it in. And then when you fold it it's going to give you a perfect corner. So hopefully you can see that. Otherwise it leaves a real pointy edge if you don't do that. So I'm going to do the exact same with the other cover. This is the back cover, I believe. The paper collection that I'm using is from Knitwit Collections. It's called Dearly Beloved, and it's actually a wedding collection. But as you can see, it's just beautiful papers. You don't have to use it strictly for a wedding theme. And for all my edges, I'm going to use some frayed burlap distress ink and lightly ink all my edges just to give them a finished look. This is a beautiful paper collection. And in the end, you'll see me add some flowers. The flowers are from a different collection from Knitwit Collections, from the Authentic Collection. So you can coordinate them. And here's the same paper, but I scaled the larger one up by 200%. So it gives it a little bit different look. I did the same here with the flowers because I wanted all my papers to coordinate. So again, just to make them look a slightly different, I just scaled up the papers. I lo love that with digital papers, you can make them as um, as you need for what you need. So I'm just adding on the back covers for the inside of my front and back cover and I'm using my cinch machine going to add my holes to the covers. I've already added all my holes to the inside papers. I'm going to add them to my binding ring and I'm adding my papers first, my front cover and then my back cover. I will press down that binding and that's my book. I love how simple the cinch machine is to use. So now I'm simply going to add my two different layers. I decided I wanted to add a piece of tool in between. So I'm using a white piece of tool, just kind of cutting that down. I will add my first layer, then the tool, and then my second layer. I decided I wanted to distress the edges, so I'm using a Tim Holtz distressing tool going around all the edges. I will also kind of tear it with my fingernail as well and use my scissors. Again, just trying to distress all the edges. Going back over with some of the frayed burlap.
for my little journaling card, I'm going to add some chipboard behind it. So I just measured out a piece. I'm using my ATG, adding that on. And I do, in the end, add another piece as well. I want it to, wanted it to be very dimensional. So here I'm just using some Scotch Quick Dry, adding my first layer. And I'm rolling up the corners on those papers as well. For the tool, I'm just adding a little bit of hot glue underneath. It'll adhere down better when I add my second layer on top. It'll hold it in place. So for my second layer, I'm putting it at a slight angle, pressing that down. And now I'm going to add the second layer of chipboard. I decided I wanted to add a little bit of stenciling, so I'm using some Liquitex modeling paste and a word stencil that I have, and I'm just going to add that to the top and bottom. I know that the middle of that page is going to be covered with the journaling card. I placed down a, a piece of paper, but in the end it, it wouldn't have mattered because it would have been hidden, but I was trying to protect that middle part. So I'm just adding that on, a nice thick layer, and now I'm going to add a little bit just around the page. Again, just giving it a little bit shabby look. And now I'm going to go to the sink. You won't see me do this, obviously, but I'm going to go to the sink and wash off my stencil very well. You want to make sure that it's very clean. I am using my heat tool to dry it, and it actually dries very quickly. And now I'm simply going to decorate the front of my cover. I will list all the products used down in the description box. I hope you stop by both Wild Orchid Crafts and Knitwick Collections. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Thanks so much for watching.